Alright, hello everyone and welcome to the next part of our Drucker County base review. We are here at the barricaded strip mall. I've already cleared it out. So, let's go inside and take a look. We'll go ahead and look at it before I build anything. It is a pretty cool looking little... Well, I say little. It's a large, large base. You can build a lot. But just like you would imagine with the strip mall, it has all the different stuff already in it. There are built-ins included in this. But it is kind of neat looking at it. Here's a Sud City. We can do our laundry. And then I believe this was a kitchen. Yep, there's the drink machine. But yeah, this is a pretty neat little base or big base, whatever you want to call it. But let's take a look at what it has to say. The barricaded strip mall, a walled-in set of shops with plenty of usable space if we have time to tear down or refit some of this stuff. There's a lot of salvage salvageable value in the wide array of stores here. Sorry about my uh, southern pronunciations. I struggle at times. It is an 8-man 3500 influence base, so it is the top of the line. It comes with an employee bathroom, sheltered beds, three parking slots instead of four, a taekwondo gym, a high-end kitchen, and an urgent care. It has a laundromat that is clearable and an art gallery in the command center, so we will get some extra morale just by being there. But without further ado, I'm going to claim it. And when we come back from the black, black, eh, oh my gosh, tongue tied. When we come back from the black screen, I shall have it built up. There we go. I made it through. I'll see you guys in just a minute. All right. <clears throat> oh man, excuse me. All right. And we are back back I have completed building this base which took quite a while believe it or not because there is quite a lot to be done so as I said I actually did manage to remember the urgent care was broken and then this needed to be something done with it this needed to be stripped with parts or this need to be broken down for materials that needed to be stripped for parts and we had some beds that I didn't want right there so that was the starting lay of the land once you upgrade or not upgrade repair the urgent care you will get a level 3 clinic which is quite useful um, it does come with a base storage I leveled it up to level 2 then it has three parking slots. Sorry, I am all discombobulated. It, I've been probably working on this base for an hour. But um, it comes with a standard storage. I upgraded it. Then the Taekwondo Gym, which is the same as a level 2 gym. But it also gives you a plus 25% training action speed. As an extra perk to that, I put my free weights in here to give me another 10 health so that's 30 plus I can get a ton of experience out of it the employee bathroom so I did actually because why not I found someone in one of our places that has a broken fighting skill but had utility so I ranked her up to plumbing so now we have the plus 10 morale for flushing the toilets because, you know, why not? Gives you plus 10 per person, and then you can clean the toilets for an additional 10. So that's a 20 per person. That is pretty substantial. Um, the command center does come with, where did it go? Art gallery in command center. It's a plus 3 morale per person. Otherwise, it is a standard command center. Then the high-end kitchen, it is a basic kitchen as far as I can tell. You can prepare a feast, rationing, all that good stuff. But it does come with a plus 25% kitchen action speed because it has some seriously good hardware, or cookware, sorry. I guess it's suited for Gordon Ramsay. But I threw a comfy chair in to get another plus 3 morale. 
and then we will look at this yes it is just a regular plain old level three or no level two and a half because it doesn't take away materials so level two and a half we'll call it now for the stuff I built or you could build there are four small facility slots to build in and three large one of the smalls is outdoors and three of the smalls are indoors so inside I built a shooting range and I actually leveled it up in case you have never seen what it can do. So when you level it up, instead of just shooting, you also get wits. So you get a plus 25% wits experience bonus. You still get the plus 20 stamina and then you also get improved gun accuracy so that is all pretty neat i usually don't upgrade it just because of the materials cost but i figured there were probably some people that have never seen it so there it is you do have to have a sheriff leader in order to upgrade it to level two and it does cost a good amount of materials just to get it there but it can be quite handy and if you have the materials and the leader for it then go for it why not then I built, of course, my workshop. It is just my normal level two with a salvage furnace. And then my other indoor, because I was running out of stuff to really build, I actually built a hydroponics. So my utilities person served two purposes because you have to have knowledge of utilities to get hydroponics, along with electricity and water, which I have from doing amenities but you could garner them in whatever fashion you like. So I also installed a garden toolkit, which adds another 30% of yield. So I get plus four food per day. Like I said, you do need water and power though. You can boost the yields if you have knowledge of gardening, but then we're getting way off track to stuff that I never really use. You can convert it to medicine if you have herbalism i usually don't build any gardens whatsoever but like i said i was running out of crap to build so i figured taking care of some food problems would be handy now i also built my still level two just as i prefer with my one outside slot so i can craft beer we actually just got done crafting some a moment ago so i'll go ahead and get that going again um if you haven't seen it, once again, you get a plus three morale to everybody for having purified drinking water. You can convert food to fuel, food to ethanol, ethanol to whiskey, and then you can just brew craft beers. Now, if you have a bartending person, you also get a growler of barley wine, I do believe, which is also extremely valuable. And if you don't have water, then you can collect water here, just like a rain catch or anything like that. Um, you do have to have a trader leader to upgrade this. I did do some leader swapping around. That's what. That's another reason it took me so long was having to swap leaders as I built everything. But yeah, still level two. I love it. I always build it now. Then for this map specifically, I have kept with the auto shop for the fuel efficiency. Even though I'm pretty much done here, this is what I would end up building just for the fuel efficiency because the driving is insanity. Then, of course, you can get the upgrades, the toolkit crafting, and the durability and reduced noise perks. I put a salvage furnace. Once again, more parts. Fantastic. Um, go back and check out my other videos if you want a more in-depth look at what you can do with the auto shop. I looked at it pretty closely in nights, and I think I also looked at it at Mike's Concrete. Now, for the lounge level 3, we discussed this in the last episode. So, I built this all the way up, and as you can see, you get a plus 15 morale from entertainment options just like at nights only difference is I get two beds so I guess that would curb some morale but not enough for me to be terribly concerned with we can still watch the training videos I still have my Xbox for the game tournaments and I was wrong you can mix a round of drinks here so 
yeah, it is literally the exact same as Knight's Drive-In, except it took me probably, I want to say, 30 to 45 minutes just to build this thing up and an astonishing amount of materials, even for standard zone, because on lethal it's like double of everything. So this would have been quite the project if I was on a much higher difficulty. But this was just to go over the fact that Knights is extremely powerful with that built in, that all you have to do is repair it. And then finally, I built the Trade Depot, my other favorite. This is yet another reason why knights could be just powerful. You only need these two to really survive in the lethal zone. You can get all of your equipment that you need, your rucksacks, so on and so forth. Run the economy, buy your stuff, win the game. Lounge, train your characters, get the morale, win the game. It is quite fantastic with that combination. Now you can obviously put whatever you want that's just my humble opinion but i went with trade depot threw a comfy chair in it to get the extra plus three morale once again and it was done this base is absolutely massive i mean i literally ran out of things to build to the point of where i was deciding between hydroponics and putting beds back in it is rare that I actually debate on putting beds back in. I almost did just to be able to put a white noise machine in. But I decided to go with food because we have a bunch of people. So we were eating like five point something food. So I just went ahead and knocked it out with the hydroponics. Um, This base is... It is quite large. I mean, you can... You get a lot out of it. I mean, the three large slots, the built-ins. I mean, you've got two built-ins that you're going to want anyways with the infirmary and the gym. I mean, both of those you would probably build anyways. So, whilst it only has four that you can customize, really you have six useful slots and that's not including, I mean, the bathrooms can be kind of handy. It's not super useful when you get to this point in the game because you're probably going to have your morale problem sorted out. And the kitchen, again, I never really find it all that useful. I mean, the only useful thing I find about it is to prepare a feast because, again, at this point in the game, you don't need snacks or coffee or energy drinks you have a stockpile by the time you make it to the final base. By the time you are in an 8-man 3500 influence base, you shouldn't have any real need of the kitchen. Now, if you're trying to achievement hunt and get the maxed out um, morale on, I think it's either Nightmare or Lethal Zone, then yes, the Prepare Feast can be handy for that. But, I mean, really, you shouldn't need the kitchen by now. So I'm, I'm not going to count the bathroom or the kitchen because by the time you're here, they should be unnecessary for you. So, yeah, you, you really have six small slots to work with. And, I mean, I usually don't have to build a shooting range and I never really build hydroponics or gardens or any of that nonsense. But here, where I have all this space, I did. The three slots, I mean, you can do some crazy crazy things with them you can do an auto shop then you can bounce around on leaders and get a um what is the warlords i can't remember what can you build when you're a warlord the armory i think it is and then you can build a forge put um salvage furnaces on all three of those plus your workshop and get four times bonus on parts i you can go ridiculous on those and you sell each part for one influence. So if you have 20,000 parts, then at any given moment, you can just run the gambit on all of your allies. You can tear down one of your buildings and put the trade depot back up, run through all of the traders, and you can just stack all of that influence up to the point of where you're just 
ultra rich godlike freaking Elon Musk on steroids when it comes to money. Like it's just silly. But anyways, I digressed quite heavily as I tend to do. This base is pretty awesome. I like it. Um, we did go through a level three siege. It worked out well. I did not move from this single spot. This little up top area is nice for waiting around because I was waiting for daytime anyways to do this. I don't know why because I'm not going anywhere. But yeah, as far as in game bases go, this in game base is pretty awesome. I do like it. It's not, you know, top of the league with the, the farmland compound and Whitney Field. But I mean, it is an extremely good base, especially on this map that I don't really care for with all the driving which brings me to my least favorite thing about it the fact that it's also at the top of the map which means you've got to do all this driving to get anywhere I mean yes I know there's little secret paths that you can take to skip a lot of the driving but I don't want to learn all of that I just want to be able to drive and following these roads on a high difficulty eats up so much gasoline that it's just unnecessary but that aside, before I digress once more, awesome base. Would I move here? Probably not. I would probably stay at Night's Drive-In. Just stay there. If you want to build up the largest base, go for it. But if you want to beat a high difficulty, just stay at night. It has everything that you need. You don't need any more than what is there it will be a cheaper route to go and you will be able to build the power so much quicker by doing so that is my opinion if you agree let me know in the comments if you disagree also let me know in the comments and tell me why maybe I can see what your point of view is and maybe I might come across the fence a little bit maybe I won't who knows no one will until you say something now, if you have liked this little run through, please like and subscribe. There will be more coming. I will continue running through the maps just to go ahead and get all of these done. And then once I'm done with base reviews, then we will start looking more in depth at some more gameplay mechanics as we roll closer to the new update so that we can have a fresh perspective on what was before what is because that new update is supposed to be massive but i have appreciated all of you and your time as always i'm the adhd gamer and i will see you next time